This is Sunflay, an estuary on the False Bay coastline of Cape Town. Maps of the area from around 1700 suggest it was originally an inlet, a wide mouth, likely with a narrow channel meandering through it, gently sloping banks and seasonal variations in the water levels. It would have had a rich biodiversity characteristic of estuaries in the region. However, with the growth of Cape Town into a major metropolitan area, it has been subjected to a variety of modifications and now looks very different to the natural estuary of the 1700s. As early as 1673, Sunflay was a cattle post for the Dutch East India Company. And later, the area, now Musenberg, became a staging post for the journey between Cape Town and Simonstown. It later became a resort area with the first hotel opening in 1851. The first major modification to the estuary was in 1866, when a decision was taken to close off and drain the flay so that the land could be used for agricultural purposes. This was a failure, but it did trigger an expansion of agricultural activities in the catchment, some of which, notably winemaking, have continued to the present day. 1882 saw the establishment of a railway line which effectively cuts off the wetlands in the northwestern corner of the flay, which have subsequently changed to be more characteristic of a freshwater system. The rower line promoted urbanization of the area, which in turn led to increasing recreational use of the flay, with the first recorded rowing regattas being held in 1884. The Lakeside Boating Association now, the Imperial Yacht Club was established in 1907. The seasonal fluctuations in water levels were not compatible with boating activities and led to the canalisation of the outlet channel in the 1950s and the construction of a rubber weir just downstream of the bridge. This is still used in combination with the sandbar at the mouth to maintain water levels for boating. The most significant development was the construction in the early 1970s of Marina de Gama, a residential area on the eastern shore of the estuary. In addition to expanding the estuary into the marina canals, the excavated material was used to construct wildwood and park islands, which lie between the marina and the main body of the estuary. Today, the estuary is located in a nature reserve, the Greater Sunflay Estuary Nature Reserve, and remains a popular recreational facility. However, the catchment area and tributaries include residential, agricultural and industrial areas. Activities in these areas, together with the intensive urbanisation around the estuary, have not only modified it physically, but have brought a variety of associated problems which need to be managed. These have led to changes in the biodiversity and the loss of ecosystem services, which have been further exacerbated by the introduction of alien species. The reduced salinity, for example, together with high nutrient levels, has led to the expansion of freshwater species such as reeds. In terms of ecosystem services, perhaps the biggest impact has been that on the role of the estuary as a nursery area for fish. Marine species whose juveniles are completely dependent on estuaries and which have historically been recorded in Sunflay include leofish, mullet and white stirnbrass, with the latter on the list of threatened species for South Africa. The reduction in their numbers is due, at least in part, to the fact that the mouth is often closed, thus preventing the juveniles from entering the estuary. One of the alien species in the estuary is the coral worm, so called because it lives in colonies of tubes of a hard, calcareous material similar to that of coral reefs. While it is reported to have beneficial effects on water quality due to the fact that it is a filter feeder, there have at times been complaints from the public the reefs inhibit passage of boats along the waterways. Despite the physical modifications and other impacts, Sunflay remains highly valued for both its natural attributes and the recreational opportunities which it affords. It is the only semi-functional estuary on the Fosse Bay coastline 
and still supports a wide diversity of birds and fish. Recreational activities include boating, picnicking, bird watching, hiking and a limited amount of fishing. It is regarded as being of regional importance in recreational terms and hosts a number of sports events including an international kite flying competition, provincial canoe championships and various yachting events. The main reason that it has remained as a functional system is that a number of successful management measures have been implemented. One of the management measures used to try and achieve a balance between conflicting uses of this ecosystem, recreation and conservation, is zonation. This is similar to the concept of marine spatial planning, but at a very local level. Sunflare was therefore divided into three zones, namely conservation, low intensity and high intensity use. In its natural state, the estuary would have been subject to seasonal changes in water levels, deeper in the winter and shallower during the dry summer months, with some parts forming shallow pans, attractive to wading birds. However, the water levels are now manipulated, and the absence of shallow pans has led to a reduction in the number of wading birds, such as flamingos, little stints, curly sandpipers, cape teals, yellow-billed ducks, marsh sandpipers, green shanks, white-winged and common terns, to name a few. The mouth is managed primarily for socio-economic reasons, to maintain water levels that are deep enough to allow yachting, but also to prevent the flooding of residential areas surrounding the estuary, as well as the collapse of fortified banks in the marina. This is achieved by opening and closing the mouth, together with adjusting the height of the rubble weir just below the bridge. In recent years, the mouth management regime has increasingly been adjusted, such that it also takes into account the needs of the estuary. For example, during the summer, when the mouth is usually closed, it is opened on high spring tides to ensure that sufficient seawater enters the system to prevent it becoming dominated by fresh water and also to enable fish to move in and out of the estuary. Yachting events are scheduled accordingly. Reduced water circulation within the system is particularly problematic in the Marina de Gama canals. The poor circulation in combination with growing quantities of nutrient pollution, such as runoff from agricultural areas, sewage pollution, stormwater drains, etc. This can result in eutrophication in the form of excessive pondweed growth and or algal blooms. Pondweed can get so thick that it makes it difficult for residents to launch their boats, while algal blooms sometimes involve species which are toxic and which can lead to massive fish kills. Anoxic conditions can also occur after prolonged calm periods or in association with algal bloom die-offs. Water quality is managed through a combination of measures water quality standards, monthly sampling to monitor water quality, the identification of pollution sources, and the introduction of measures to prevent or reduce pollution. Pondweed occurs naturally in Zunflay and is an important component of the ecosystem, providing habitat for a variety of organisms, reducing nutrients, and oxygenating the water. However, the high nutrient conditions have increased pondweed growth and has become a problem in Zunflay at times forming dense mats which restrict boating activities, exacerbate flooding, limit light penetration into the water column, restrict current flow and increase stagnation. The pondweed in Zunfle has therefore been managed since 1976 by harvesting it using a mechanical harvester. So there are a few lessons to be learned from this. Prevention is better than cure. Try to avoid developments which impact on the structure and functioning of estuaries. Not only is it better for the biodiversity, but management measures can be costly. Nevertheless, there are management measures available to restore and maintain estuaries to the extent that they can function reasonably normally and provide at least some of the ecosystem services for which they are valued. And if these are to be successful, they should be developed in consultation with the various user groups.